the Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum looks back at the year 2023 in what we call our State of Human Rights uh, Report for the year 2023. As we do so today, we are cognizant of the fact that today it is International Human Rights Day. And this year, the United Nations has come up with a theme, Freedom, Equality and Justice for All. As Zimbabweans, we wish we could have joined the world in celebrating International Human Rights Day, especially in view of this particular theme. But all we can do is to commemorate but not celebrate. For issues such as freedom, issues such as equality, and issues such as justice for all, which are the mainstay of the theme of the CS commemoration, are issues which have remained a pipe dream for us as Zimbabweans. This year has especially been significant for us due to a number of things and of violations of human rights, which occurred as a result of the elections which happened on the 23rd of August 2023. Therefore, as we look back at this year, we look at a number of important developments and important issues that happened which should not have happened at all. An election is not a time for people to kill each other. An election is a time for which people will be able to choose freely who their next leaders are. But as we look back at the year 2023, we have a number of people who lost their lives unnecessarily in what we call cases of extrajudicial killings. We are aware at the moment that the police recently <coughs> issued a statement regarding uh, the murder of uh, opposition uh, activist uh, Bishop uh, Masaya. And we certainly say the abduction and murder of uh, Bishop Masaya should be the last. As a country, we can't keep on having cases of abductions. And I will speak to abductions shortly. But linked to the aspect of elections, we also also had a case uh, which was reported from Bulawayo of Malikongwe Dube, a 14-year-old who was allegedly murdered because uh, his sister was a polling agent for one of the opposition political parties. We have had a case in Kachuta village in Guruwe North, uh, which we, we have been calling on for an inquest to happen following the death of Persuade Mandara, uh, who allegedly was assaulted and tortured by the police leading to his death. There has been silence by the police regarding this and our application for an inquest still remains pending and these are some of the issues uh, which are of concern. We are aware of the death of Tinashe Chitsunge uh, in Glenora during elections uh, who was allegedly assaulted and killed by ZANPF supporters. We saw a statement by the police saying he was run over by a campaign lorry. And it is such issues which are of concern when life has been lost. It is indeed something which is important that life should not be lost either for a political party or for any other cause. Certainly, life is sacrosanct, and even our constitution in Zimbabwe speaks to the rights to life. We continue to express uh, sadness with the increase in the number of abductions which are happening in the country. 14 abductions have been verified and documented by the Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum. We have had instances in which the police have said that some of those cases have not been reported to the police, but we call upon the police to take, be proactive and take steps to ensure that investigations take place. Those who are pointed out or alleged to be the perpetrators are arrested. In the case of uh, the abduction of, or near abduction of uh, Honorable Ngaziwari, we actually uh, saw photos which went viral on social media of people who were identified as those who were going to perpetrate this NS act. But no, no one has been arrested. We encourage the police to take advantage of any links to ensure that investigations are take place. There have been countless uh, cases of assault and torture uh, of uh, citizens around the country for various reasons, including cases of women and, uh, and elderly women in Murewa. Uh, we have had children, people with disabilities, uh, people being assaulted throughout and we have verified and documented 650 cases of assault. 
Certainly, issues of rape and sexual assault is something that has been reported as being used, and unfortunately, in an election year, this is something that also seems to have been targeted at some uh, polling agents. And certainly, we call upon the police to also investigate cases in which uh, some first members allegedly raped some women in some constituencies, and uh, it is something that is important that no one should certainly suffer from such particular issues. The issue of arrests uh, and unlawful detention is something which we see uh, continuing. Of major concern to us has been the arrest for, of people because of their political beliefs. We have documented so much in terms of the arrest of members of the political opposition. We have people who have now been incarcerated uh, with uh, Honorable Scala, uh, clocking 544 days uh, in Casco, I think he has certainly it's a record of someone who has been on pre trial detention uh, for this long. Certainly, we call upon uh, all stakeholders involved to carefully look at their conscience and say, Is this something uh, that uh, we want? We saw the arrest of uh, staffers and volunteers from the Zimbabwe Election Support Network and from the Election Resource Center on the 23rd of August. Uh, ostensibly because uh, they wanted to do parallel voter uh, tabulation. Parallel voter tabulation is something which is allowed in terms of our laws here in Zimbabwe. And certainly the blocking of those doing parallel voter tabulation can lead to not only speculation that they were stopped so that uh, they could not produce uh, a results a week they are pulling uh, their observers yet uh, collected from the various polling sections. Therefore, it is important that such things should not happen and that NGOs should be free to do their work. In any case, ZESIN and ERC yet been accredited by the Zimbabwe Election Support Network to do the work and they should therefore not have been arrested for doing that which they have been accredited uh, to do. Police arrested them because they said they wanted to publicize uh, the election results, but certainly there is no evidence to the fact that they wanted to publicize election results and gathering of election data is certainly allowed, especially for use in research and for use in producing things such as the parallel of water tabulation. And something which was mentioned even by the Zimbabwe Election Commission chairperson, Justice Chikumba. Coming to the other issues are of a shrinking democratic space, we continue to express concern over some of the laws that we have seen. The Criminal Law Codification and Reform Amendment Act, uh, which is otherwise known as the Patriotic Law, is of major concern to have been passed and being a law which has serious consequences, being a law in which people can actually be sentenced to up to death, people can be sentenced for lengthy periods in prison, but people can also lose citizenship or people can lose the right either to participate in an election as a voter or to participate in an election as a candidate. This is a law which we do not believe belongs to the 21st century, and this is a law we believe should certainly be repealed. But we have heard stories of the laws such as the Private Voluntary Organizations Amendment Bill, which the President said uh, will have to be reintroduced and brought back to Parliament uh, in the first second of the 10th Parliament. It is again a law which continues to affect as in terms of the operational modalities of non-governmental organizations, making it difficult for NGOs to work, but also coming up with very difficult and very severe uh, criminal sanctions in the manner in which some of the issues are raised. Whilst it is commendable that the government can come uh, want to ensure proper corporate governance within the NGO sector, we have always believed that issues such as the NGO sector being non-governmental deserve to be dealt with uh, in a self-regulatory mode, such as what we have seen within the legal profession, but not the compulsory uh, registration mode to be superintended by one person being the registrar of PVOs as is envisaged insofar as this our law is concerned. We therefore call upon uh, the government, we call upon even parliament to consider such a, uh, the, of these laws with an open mind to ensure that we perpetrate democracy in Zimbabwe. The issue of fear is something that really has affected us in the year 2023. Fear of the unknown, fear of being arrested, fear of what is going to become of us. But some of the issues, yes, 
also been as a result of the fact that the police have not acted like a professional police force. We call upon our police to exhibit professionalism. We call upon our police to stop operating as a partisan police force. They are not a police force for a particular political party. They are a police force for Zimbabweans and people who are in Zimbabwe. But we cannot end the year without also making reference to issues of importance such as economic, social and cultural rights. We continue to get worried about the fact that we receive reports that there are no medicines within the hospitals uh, and therefore that people are going to the hospitals and coming out either without being treated or have yet to find other ways of getting treated. The cholera outbreak is something that we have to be content. And we call upon the government to actively participate in this to ensure that uh, the cholera outbreak is also brought to uh, uh, out. We note the under budgeting uh, in terms of resources which have now been provided, uh, which will be provided to the Minister of Health, and we call upon a parliament to uh, move for a revision of this budget and ensure that critical areas such as health get uh, more than what it is that has been uh, appropriated uh, to it. But we also note with concern the number of taxes that the Minister of Finance have proposed to introduce and take note of the fact that this will erode the already eroded uh, income by Zimbabweans. Uh, this is a budget which is not people oriented and will call upon the Minister, will call upon the legislature to ensure that whatever budget is approved at the end of the day is a people centered budget. It's a budget which reflects that we have come out of the elections and that the will of the people is whatever it is uh, that will uh, take place at the end of the day. So there are so many things that Zimbabweans need, the right to shelter, right to water, right to food, are all issues people really need. And as we go into 2024, we hope the situation can improve, we hope an, uh, our environment will be conducive, and we hope for once the people of Zimbabwe will feel equal, the people of Zimbabwe will feel that they can enjoy justice and that they will believe justice is, is for all. At the end of the day, uh, looking at the fact that 10 December, uh, immediately after Christmas comes, we can only wish people a Merry Christmas, Happy 2024, and wish for the best for the remainder of the year. Thank you.